All right, guys, so we're going to get started now. Initially, I was going to have you clone the React Express starter. We actually created this a couple months back in a video if you want to check that out. But it's basically just a very simple Node.js server that has one endpoint for API customers, and it's just a, a hard coded array. And then we have our client folder, which has the React app inside of it, just a just a boilerplate React app. And in the package.json, we have some scripts and we're using concurrently to basically basically run the server and the client at the same time. The server runs on port 5000, the client runs on port 3000. But I, I changed my mind about that because I don't like I like to start from absolute scratch. So basically like a, a blank folder. And the reason for that is because when I take courses or I watch series on YouTube or anything like that and they have you start off with cloning some repository, it's really aggravating because you you don't know what what's in that repository for sure unless they really go over it, which they usually don't. And you just you don't you don't see the whole the whole picture, the whole application and really understand what's going on. So I'm not going to do that. So we're going to kind of build this along with what what we're doing and then maybe at the end you then you'll understand how this works. works which is pretty simple anyway but uh, and then you can use it in future projects instead of starting from absolute scratch all right so that's what we're going to do so let's open up vs code and i just have a blank folder called mern shopping list and we're going to start with the back end so we're going to start by building an express api using mongoose to interact with mongodb uh, it's going to be very simple okay the back end is very simple we're just going to have a couple endpoints So let's create or let's rather open up our terminal. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and we're going to run npm init. So Mern shopping list, good version description. We'll say uh, let's say shopping list built with the Mern stack. Um, entry point, I'm going to say server.js when I build full stack apps. where we're using like a front end framework um, along with node. I usually like to name it server JS because that's what it is. It's the server. Uh, let's go through this name. This is completely open source. You can put your own name. I'm going to give it an MIT license. And yes, that's okay. All right. So now we have our package JSON file. If we look at that, it should look like this. Um, and we're going to have to install some dependencies okay not too many but some so let's do npm install express of course which is our back end framework it's what we use to create our routes and stuff like that um, we're also going to need body parser so that we can handle data that comes in uh, when when a request is made to our server we want to be able to read the body for post requests stuff like that um, What else do we need here? We're going to need Mongoose to interact with our library. And ba, 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 let's see, what, what the hell is that? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, we also need concurrently. Okay, and this we're, concurrently is basically so we can run more than one NPM script at a time so that we'll be able to run the server and the client at the same time. Um, but we're not going to need that just yet, but we might as well get it installed. All right, so let's install those dependencies. All right, so there we go. Um, we also want Nodemon, which will constantly watch our back end and just reload. You know, when we save, it'll it'll automatically update so we don't have to keep re stopping the server, starting it and so on. So let's go ahead and do an NPM install. I'm going to do dash uppercase D, which will save it as a dev dependency because it's not needed for production. It's just a dev dependency. and we'll install that. Okay. All right, so now what we'll do is add a couple scripts here. Um, we're not do going to be doing testing, so we don't need that. Let's let's put a start script in here. And this is just going to run node and then the name of the file which is server.js. So this is basically like to run it in production. Uh, but we're going to use nodemon. So let's create um, another script here called server which is what we'll be working with first. We're not going to deal with the client yet and we'll run nodemon server.js. And the difference between these two is this. If we run this, we'll have to restart the server after every change. 
um, every server side change. And then this will actually continuously watch it and we won't have to keep updating it. Okay, so that's all we need for now. So we'll save this and close it up and let's create our server.js. Okay, so in our server.js, we're going to just bring in what we need. So, of course, we need Express, which is our backend framework, and we will require Express. Uh, let's see, we're going to need two more things. So, I'll copy that down. We're going to need Mongoose. Okay, Mongoose is our ORM to interact with our MongoDB database. Makes everything a lot easier. Um, you could use like the MongoDB driver if you want, but I find Mongoose much more intuitive and easier to use and, and just better all around. Uh, we also want body parser, and that's just my opinion, guys. And let's say body parser. Okay, so body parser will allow us to take requests and, and, and get data from the body. For instance, when we send a post request, we want to be able to get the name of that post from the, um, from the request. So that's what we need to bring in. Next thing we want to do is just initialize express into a variable called app if I can type it. Um, so this will be equal, equal to express like that. I'm sure you guys have seen this stuff before. Um, body parser has a piece of middleware that I need to add. Okay, so this is just going to be app dot use and we want to pass in here body parser dot json dot json like that whoops all right um, next thing whoops what the hell next thing we want to do is we need uh, we need a mongo db uri to be able to connect to obviously we need a database so let's let's take a pause here real quick and do that so we're going to go to mlab.com And like I said, you, you can use um, a local MongoDB database if you want. The code is going to be the pretty much the exact same, except for the URI. It'll be, you know, your local host as opposed to this remote database. Uh, but this is a really great service. I highly recommend it. Um, if you're if it's a production app, you know, a serious application, I would suggest upgrading past the free account. Um, you know, it adds redundancy and, and speed and storage and stuff like that. But for development, absolutely fine to use the free account. So uh, I already have an account, so I'm going to just log in. If you don't just sign up, it's free, no credit card needed or anything. I have a couple databases here. Dev Connector is actually my Udemy course, um, uh, Mern Stack app. But we're going to say, where is it? Create new. And we're going to use Amazon Web Services as our cloud provider. You can also use Google Cloud or Azure. And let's click that. Click continue. I'm going to choose US East for my region. Depending where you are, you may have different options. I'm not sure. Uh, database name. I'm just going to call it Mern underscore shopping. Doesn't really matter what we call it. You might have to call it something different. I don't know if it's unique or not. And then you can see the summary. Everything is completely free submit the order and it's going to just create our database once this blue key turns to a green check it's all set so we can click on it you'll see we have no collections obviously we have an, um, a message saying a database user is required now it doesn't mean your mlab user account it means a, a, a user for the specific database so we have to create that and we do that by clicking the users tab and then add database user okay and i'm just going to call this user Brad password. I'm going to do Brad one, two, three. Um, did I do that right? Brad one, two, three. They recently made it so it has to be six characters. I used to always just do Brad for the password in my tutorials, but now I can't. Um, you could also make this read only if you wanted to this account. All right, so we'll save that. Now we have a database user. All right, so now we should be all set here. This is our Mongo URI, this string right here. So let's actually copy that because we're going to need that. And then let's go back to VS Code. And what I like to do is put any API keys, any database URIs, anything like that. I like to put in a separate file inside of a config folder. So we're going to create a folder called config and a file called keys.js. Okay, it's just like this, just how I like to do it. Um, and then we just want to export. So module dot exports. 
an object and we're going to use uh, Mongo URI URI as the key and then the value will be that string. Now it's very important that you replace this with your user. So mine is Brad and replace this with your password, which mine is Brad one, two, three. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now what we'll do is in our server .js, we want to bring this file in. Okay, so let's say um, and we want to assign it to a variable. So I'm going to say DB config. Let's say const DB equals require. We want to require that keys file, which is in the config folder and then keys. And all we want from it is the Mongo URI so we can say dot Mongo URI and that'll give us that value. Okay, so now what we need to do is connect to MongoDB. So we'll say connect to Mongo and we do that using Mongoose. So we're going to say Mongoose dot connect. And you want to pass in that DB object. Okay. And then this is promise based. So we're going to say dot then. So once it connects, what do we want to do? I just want to send a console message so we can put a callback in here, which I'm using an arrow function. And we can just say console log and we'll say Mongo DB connected. Okay, just so it just so we know that we're actually connected. And then if there's some kind of error, if the promise rejects, then we'll get an error inside the dot catch and we'll just log that so we know what what's going on. So we'll console log error. Okay, um, let's see. We'll also put connect on the next line as well, just to kind of clean it up there. There we go. All right. So now that we're connect, we connect to Mongo. We need to actually be able to run our server. So what I'm going to do is create a variable for the port we're going to use. And we may deploy this to Heroku. And with Heroku, you want to set it to this process dot dot port. Okay, this is a um, an environmental uh, variable. Uh, but then we want to say or port 5000. Okay, and then we want to app dot listen. So we want our app to listen on that port so that put the variable in. It can also take a call back if you want something to happen, uh, which I just want to log. I'm going to console log and just say I'm going to put back ticks in here and say server started on port and then use the variable syntax like that and put in port. Okay, so it should say whatever server started on port 5000. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and we should be able to run it. Now remember back in our package.json we could run npm start, um, but I want to use nodemon to continuously watch the server, so we're going to do npm run server. So let's do that. Let's go down here and let's say npm run server. And there we go. Server started on port 5000, MongoDB is also connected. Good. That is what we want. Um, so what's next? What's next is our API. We want to be able to to get requests from our front end from our react application um, to fetch items from the database to post items to the database and to delete them. Those are the three things that we need to be able to happen. Um, now when you're using mongoose, you want to create what's called a model which is just that it's a model of of your data. It's the fields that you want and so on. And uh, an item is going to be very simple. Basically, it's just going to have a name. Um, we'll also give it a date, but the date will set to to just automatically put in whatever the current date is. So let's create a folder called models. And let's call this file inside here. We're going to call it item .js. And for models, I like to always have a capital at the beginning. So capital I item .js. And then we're just going to bring in mongoose. So we're going to require mongoose. And then we also want to um, we're going to be creating a schema. So let's create a variable called schema like that and set that equal to mongoose dot schema. Okay. Um, then what we want to do is create our schema. So we're going to have a variable called item schema 
and we're going to set that to a new schema object. And then that schema object takes in um, an object, an object literal, um, which is going to have the fields that we want. Now we want a name and we want to give it a type of string. Okay, we can also mark it required. So we'll say require required equals true. And then the only other thing that I want to put here is a date. So for date, we'll give it a type of date and then we can actually give these default values. So we're going to say the default should be and we'll use date dot now, which will actually just give us whatever the current date and time is. Okay, and that's it. That's our schema. And one of the reasons I wanted to do such a simple application is because I didn't want to put in a million different fields, stuff like that. I want you guys to see how this works without having to just, you know, type and type more stuff that is, is kind of redundant. I just want you to know how it works and you can create other bigger applications if you want. So let's say module dot exports. Okay, because right now we have no access to anything in this file. So I'm going to say equals item. We're going to call it item. And then we just want to do another equals to mongoose dot model. Okay, so we're creating a model and that is going to take in a name, which will be item. And it'll also take in the schema. Okay, the model needs to know what the schema is. And that's it. So let's save this. And now this whole model should be exported so that we can bring it into other files. All right, so that's that. Um, Now we could put all of our routes in the app in the server JS file. You know, we could do app dot get um, API items, app dot post API items, app dot delete API items, ID or whatever. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep this clean. So we're going to have um, a separate folder called routes. And then inside routes, I'm going to have a folder called API. Okay, because the the API routes are going to they're going to return JSON. Okay, if you want if, if you wanted for some reason to render stuff on the server, maybe you have a template engine, you want to render a page or whatever, then that wouldn't be inside the API um, folder. You would just, you know, that would be something else. So I like to specify that this is going to these are API routes. Um, and then what we'll do is inside here, the API folder will create a file called items.js. Okay, and this is where all of our routes will go. Now to for this items file to actually work for, for our system to know to look there, we have to add a couple lines. So one up here, we're going to say const items will create a variable called items. And we're going to require that to that that file. So it'll be um, routes. Is it routes? Yeah, dot slash route slash API slash items. Okay, now I want any request that goes to API slash items slash anything. I want that to go to that file. So what we do is down here, um, let's go right above where we define the port. And let's say use routes. So we can just say app dot use. And we want to say anything that goes to API slash items should refer to the items variable, which is this, which is the file, this file here. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And we'll go ahead and save that. Um, now we have an error here that says router dot use requires a middleware function. That's because we haven't actually added anything in the items file and we need to. So let's do that now. Um, so we're going to go into items JS and we want to use what's called the, the express router. So we want to bring in express. Okay, and then we want to bring we want to create a router variable and set it to express dot router. Okay, router is is part of the express object. Um, now what we want to do is bring in our item model because we need that to make um, basically to make queries to find we can do item dot find or uh, save stuff like that. So let's create a variable called item. Actually, we'll do capital I since it's a model and then set it to require. And we want it to go to that models 
um, items item model. So it's dot dot slash to go outside of the API folder dot dot slash to go outside of the routes folder and then into models and then into item. Okay. Um, and before I forget, we need to export default router or else no other file will read what's in here. I always forget to do that. Ah, <laughs> I did this. I did this in the ES6 fashion and we're not using Babel or anything. So we actually have to do module dot exports. I'm glad I caught that equals router. Okay, um, and you can use um, ESM modules in node, but they're not. I wouldn't suggest using it. You need a flag and so on. It's not like completely baked in yet, which I can't wait until it is. Uh, so now what we want to do is create some routes. Now, I like to label my routes with um, like a declaration of comments. So I like to say, for instance, the the actual route and it's going to be a get request to API slash items. Okay, I also like to put the description of what this route does. And if you take my Udemy course, we do this for every route we create and it's a lot more in depth. So this will get all items. And then we'll also put an access. Now everything is going to be public in this particular project because we don't have any any um, authorization or I'm sorry, authentication, which is something I may add in the future. But for now, everything is just public. Okay, so let's create our route now instead of app dot get, which is oh, why does it keep doing that instead of app dot get, which is what we would do in the server JS file. Since we're using the router, we want to do router dot get. Okay, and then we just want to put a slash here because remember everything that if if we hit this endpoint um, right here, API items in in uh, an HTTP client, it's going to go right to this file. So we don't actually put API slash items in here because we're already in that route. So we just want to slash. Okay, so this slash will it represents this actual endpoint since we're using the router. If we were in the server JS file, then yes, we would have to do app dot get API slash items. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so let's put in our arrow function here with a request and response. And what do we want to do here? So we want to basically fetch all of the um, items from the database. Now, of course, there are there are none, but at least we can get we'll be able to get like an empty array. So we want to take the model, which is item, because that's what we called it right here. We take the model and we want to use the find method. So with mongoose, we have a find method. We could just do that. And then this returns a promise. Okay, so we want to do dot then um, and then in here it'll give us the items. Okay, it'll fetch from the database, give us the items. And then what do we want to do with those items? Well, this is a JSON API, so we just want to say res dot JSON and then pass in items. Okay, uh, but one thing I want to do is I actually want to sort these and with mongoose we can use dot sort and I want to sort by the date. Okay, so I'm going to say sort by the date and then we can put either a one or a negative one and I want it to be descending. So I'm going to do a negative one. Okay, and that's it. That will give us our items. So let's go ahead and save that and see if we get any errors down here. Okay, looks like everything is good. Now to test uh, APIs, I actually should have went through this earlier, but you need to use an HTTP client. So I would highly, highly recommend using Postman, which is just a phenomenal program. Um, it used to be a Chrome extension, but now it's a standalone program. It's uh, it's actually built on Electron, which is a, a framework to build desktop apps with JavaScript, which is incredible. But you want to go ahead and download this. I should have it installed. I think I do. One second. Yeah, OK, so I'm just going to open mine up. All right, and you should get something like this. So what I'll do here, uh, I'll just leave it full screen, I guess. But we want to make a get request to our to that endpoint, that API items and see what happens. So in here, let's do HTTP 
make sure your server's running, of course. And then we want localhost port 5000 slash API slash items. Okay, so this is good. What's happening is we're getting a 200 response. Okay, and HTTP 200 means okay. That's what you want. That's successful. And it's just giving us an empty array because obviously there's nothing in the database. So that's a good sign. Uh, it's a good sign that that route is actually working. So what I want to do now is create our post endpoint. So what I'll do is copy this whole thing right here, including the declaration. And we'll change this because now it's a post request to API items. And it's going to add, or let's say create, uh, create a post, and it's going to be public. Um, normally, this would probably be private if you had authentication, but for now, it's going to be public. And we're going to make sure that this is router dot post because now we're making a post request. And then, as far as uh, you know, we don't need sort. Obviously, we can get rid of that. And actually, we want to get rid of this item dot find altogether because that's not what we're doing. Uh, we want to construct an object to insert into the database. So I'm going to create a variable called new item and set it to new item because item is the name of our mod our uh, model. Okay, we brought it in right here. If this were like a post item or I'm sorry, a post model or Uh, a product or something it would be post or product whatever but we're going to say new item and then pass in an object and all we need is the name now the name is going to come from the request it's going to come in the body of the request and we get that with request.body.name and using the body parser allows us to do this um, now we don't need anything else even though if we look at the model it has a date the date is going to be automatically inserted and it's going to be the whatever the current date is so we don't actually need to put this in if we had other fields here we would need to handle those but we don't so we just need the name um, so once we have that variable new item set to a new item object uh, we can actually take that new item variable and we can call dot save okay because it's not saved yet it's just basically Um, created in memory now we want to save it to the database now this is promise based as well so we can say dot then and then what do we want to happen it gives us back the item that it's saving and what we want to do is just res dot json and we want to spit out that item in json okay and that's it so let's save that and now what we'll do is we'll test this out just like we did with the get We, are, we want to go to postman. Why isn't this opening? All right. So now what we need to do is make a post request to the same URL URL. It's API items, except we want to add a header value of content type because this has to be JSON. So the content type value should be application slash JSON. And then what I'm going to do is go down here to raw. I'm sorry. I want to go to body. Wait, headers. Yeah, I want to go to body and then raw. Sorry about that. And you can see it should say JSON application right here. And then we can just put in custom JSON. Now, with 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 actual JSON, not an object literal, but actual JSON, the keys and the values should be in double quotes. So we want to say name. And let's say milk for the value. Okay, so what I hope to happen is we send this request with milk in the body and then it gets added to the database and it sends back a 200 response along with that new object, that new um, item. So let's go ahead and try it. We'll click send and there we go. So we get a 200 response. Let's make this pretty and you can see it gives it back. We have the name of milk. It has the date. It also has an ID because with MongoDB, when you insert something by default, it gives you back an, an underscore ID value. Okay, so this is this is what it gives us for an ID. And that should be now in the database. So if I go to Chrome. Uh, what that? Why is this not working? If I go to Chrome and we go to MLab and I reload my MLab interface, 
look at that. We now have an items collection. We didn't have to go and create this items collection like you do in, in SQL a lot of times. You have to go in and create your actual tables. Uh, it just gets created. And if we look in items, we have milk. Okay, so it actually got saved to the database. Um, if we want to try again to add something else, we can just keep this open. We can change this to eggs and click send and we get back that object and it should now be in our database. If I reload, there it is eggs. All right. So the last thing we need to do in our back end here is the delete. We want to be able to delete these these uh, items as well. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole thing. And let's say this is going to be a delete request. Um, now the delete, it's going to need an ID. So it's going to be the route is going to be API items and then whatever the ID. And let's say this will delete a post. Why do I ugh, I put post item? Did I do that up here too? I did. This should be create an item. Create an item. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so we want to delete an item. So this will be a router dot delete. Okay, it's going to be a delete request and we want to pass in colon ID, which is like a placeholder for whatever we pass in as an ID. Now we have to first find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this and we're going to say item and we're not going to use find. We're going to use find by ID. See all these methods. These are all available with mongoose, but we want to find by ID. and then just pass in the ID. Now, the way that we get it from the parameter, because it's going to be in the URL, the way that we can get it is by using request.params.id. That will actually fetch it from the URI. Um, and then that'll give us a promise back. So we do dot then. And that'll give us the actual item that's it'll just give us the item we're searching for. No delete yet. And then we're going to set an arrow function. And we want to then remove it. So we're going to say item dot remove. And then that will give us a promise so we can say dot then. Um, and then all I'm going to do is put in a callback here and we're going to say res dot Jason. And it's up to you what you want to return. I'm just going to return an object that says success. True. Okay, and your responses are completely up to you. Um, now, with this item find by ID, if we pass in an ID that doesn't exist, we should uh, it, it should call it should get a um, promise reject. So we should be able to do a catch right here. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do catch. And in here we'll pass in error. And then we, we want to send back a response, but we don't want to send just res dot Jason. We don't want it to be a 200s response, which means everything's okay. We want a 404, which is a not found error. So we're going to do res dot status, pass in 404 and then do dot Jason and what we want to send. And all I'm going to send is we'll say success false, I guess. You could be more specific, but that's that's fine for now, I guess. Um, so let's save that. And let's see, looks like we have an error. Catch is not a function. Wait a minute. That's because I put it on the actual <laughs> router. This should be. Oops. This should not be here. This should be right here. Like that. Okay. All right, so let's give it a shot. We'll go. Uh, let's see, we'll go to Postman and we want an ID. So this eggs right here has this ID. So I'm going to just copy that real quick and then let's make a delete request to API items slash and then that ID and send and we get success true. Now what we'll do is make a get request. to API items so we can fetch all the items and eggs should be gone. So let's do that. And there we go. We just have milk. Okay. Um, now, if we were to try to, I'm just going to open up another tab here. If we were to try to delete one that wasn't there. So if I go 
delete, pass that in, and let's do just an ID that doesn't exist and send, we get success false. Okay, and if we do this get request again, um, this get request, we'll get the same thing, just milk. All right, so that's it, guys. I'm not going to save this. Um, our back end is now complete for this application. All right, so in the next video, we're going to start to create our React application. So we're going to start to work on the front end um, to deal with this back end. And this is a very simple back end, guys. If you take my Udemy course, you'll see that it can get a lot more difficult and it can even get a lot more difficult than that, um, especially if you're dealing with like authentication, which again, I may get into in the future. But for now, I just want you to understand how everything works together and you've now built a back end API. All right. So I will see you in the next video.